All right, guys, today we're going to learn how to balance word equations. This, just to give you a warning, is the hardest part for students in Chapter 6. This is the hardest concept for students to learn. And so I'm going to go through it slow. We've got many practice problems to work through. But I want to, uh, to make sure that you're paying attention um, really closely to this next part. Okay, before we get started into balancing word equations, We've got to talk about something first, and it's called the diatomic molecules. So hopefully you're following along in your chapter 6 guided notes. Diatomic molecules, I want you to write this. What does di mean, guys? Di means two. Make that note in your guided notes. Make that note. So di means two, and atomic means atoms. So these are two atom molecules. And there's seven of them, okay? The seven diatomic molecules you need to know by memory, and I'm going to try to make it easy to remember these, okay? The first one is hydrogen. Now notice, with the hydrogen, when it's by itself, it has a little subscript two. That's the diatomic part. They're, it's bonded to itself covalently Remember, hydrogen's dot structure had one dot, and another hydrogen's dot structure has one dot. Do they want one valence electron, or how many do they want? They want two. So what's going to happen if there's a lot of hydrogen around is it's going to bond to itself, and they share the two electrons between them. Well, and then you draw a line for the covalent bond, and it looks like this. To write it in a formula, we put H2. Okay? But there's more than just hydrogen. Nitrogen is diatomic, so it's N2. Oxygen is diatomic, so O2. Fluorine is diatomic, so it's F2. Chlorine is diatomic, so Cl2. Bromine, Br2. And finally, iodine is diatomic, so there's seven of them. How are we going to remember these seven? Because every time that these elements, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, are by themselves, you can't just write H if it's just hydrogen. You have to write H2. If it's just chlorine, you can't just write Cl. You've always got to remember to put a 2 down there. This is the only time in chemistry that you can change a subscript, is if these diatomic elements are by themselves you need to add a little 2 in order to balance these equations properly. So I've, uh, I've got an easy mnemonic to help us remember these seven diatomic molecules. And here it is. So there's a spot for you to write this down in your notes. The mnemonic uh, it says, ostriches never fly high in brown clouds. Ostriches never fly high in brown clouds. Write that down and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so the ostriches part, what is the O for? That's for oxygen, it's O2. What is the never for? Nitrogen is N2, it's diatomic. What is the F in fly? Fluorine. Fluorine, so that's F2. The H? Hydrogen. The I is for iodine. The Br, now it's two letters here, Br is what? Bromine is diatomic. And Cl? That's chlorine. Okay, so if you forget and you want to remember what the seven diatomics are, Ostriches never fly high in brown clouds. Write it down. Uh, you remember that, uh, the, which ones are diatomic. Now, there's another way. Okay? If you look at the periodic table, so look up here. If you're watching the video at home, grab a periodic table and look at atomic number 7. Which element is atomic number 7? I'm saying 7 because there's seven, because there's seven diatomic elements 
if you look at the periodic table and you go to atomic number of seven is nitrogen. If you go over to fluorine and down to iodine, see how it makes a number seven? Okay, those are the diatomics, except for there's one that's missing. Which one's missing? Which one's missing? Hydrogen. hydrogen. You just got to remember hydrogen's missing and you got to include that one. There's one more, I don't know if it's school appropriate, but I, I did learn it when I was learning chemistry. So, there's another mnemonic, it's have no fear of ice cold beer. Have no fear of ice cold beer. It also will help you remember the seven diatomic elements. Although I'm not going to list it here because I would rather that you guys remember ostriches never fly high in brown clouds. It's more school appropriate and it works just as, just as well. Yeah. Or if you want to come up with your own mnemonic, go ahead. But uh, that's the one that I learned and that I use. Okay, uh, okay, so let's continue on with the notes. In a word equation, if there is a diatomic molecule by itself, I want you to circle by itself, you must put a sub subscript to by it. So again, if hydrogen is just by itself, you've got to put H and you've got to put a little 2 as a subscript there. Now, what if it's not by itself? What if it's hydrogen chloride? HCl. Do you put a little 2 here? No. no. Only if those seven diatomic molecule or molecules are by themselves, then you put a 2. So if it's not by itself, do not put a 2 by it. Put a little star there. If it's not by itself, you don't do that. Only if these elements are by themselves. Okay. Let's go to a practice problem and this will hopefully make sense. Again, this is the hardest part of the chapter. Please pay attention closely to what we're doing here. Okay. Here's a word equation. Aluminum and oxygen react to form aluminum oxide. Okay, we need to come up with the skeleton equation. What I mean by that is the formulas and, and make an equation out of it. Aluminum, what are we going to write for aluminum? What is its formula or, or a symbol? AL. AL. Okay. Is it diatomic? It's not one of the diatomics. So I can just leave it like, like it is, AL. What do I write for and? A plus sign. Oxygen. What's oxygen symbol? O. o. Now, is, is it a diatomic molecule? Yes. It is. Is it by itself? Yes. It is. So what do I need to do? Put a little 2 right there. Oxygen by itself always exists as a diatomic, so O2. Okay, now what do I write when it says react to form? Yeah, the arrow represents that reaction. There's a chemical reaction that happened there. And it forms aluminum oxide. You guys remember this from the last chapter, I hope. Whenever we have the word written out, what do I like you to write above the word? The charges, because this is a compound, aluminum oxide. What's the charge of aluminum? Plus three, if you got your periodic table, take it out. Aluminum's charge is plus three. It's in group 13 right there. Plus three. Oxide is for what element? Oxygen. What charge does it have? Minus two. So then what do we do? Crisscross. That three comes down here. This two comes down here. And so when we write the formula, it's Al. What number goes by the aluminum? Two. Two. And O, what number goes by it? Three. Three. Okay, so we're combining what we did learn last chapter, right? With what we're doing this chapter. Okay, now is that equation balanced? Uh, no. no. So let's balance it. What do we do? Find the arrow, draw the line down. Then I just list them from left to right. I've got aluminum, I've got oxygen. Put it in the same order on the product side of our equation. Okay, now we're going to go through and actually count them. How many aluminums on this side? One. How many oxygens? Two. 
two. How many aluminums on the product side? Two. Two. How many oxygens? Three. Okay. Is it balanced? It's not. So I just go from the top to the bottom. How many? How do I get my aluminums balanced? Two. Times it by two. So what do we call this number up front? The coefficient. So I need a coefficient of two. That gives me two aluminums. Are we now balanced? Well, in terms of aluminum we are, but in terms of oxygen we're not. Okay, I got a two and three. What's the lowest number that two and three will go into? Six. six. So let's try and get to six. What coefficient would I need here to get to six? A three. That gets me to six on the reactant side. Now let's try to get to six on the product side. What coefficient would I need here? A two, because two times three is what? It's six. But did that change my aluminums? It did. What do I need to, what is my aluminums now? Two times two is four, good job. Now how do I go back to four on this side? Yeah, I need to erase that two, and I need to put a what? A four here, because that's how I can get to four. Can I reduce a four, three, two? Nope, there's your answer. Kind of a little more complicated word equations, aren't they, guys? Yeah. We're combining what we did with naming ionic compounds in Chapter 5 with balancing equations with what we're doing here in Chapter 6. It gets a little complicated. Okay. Before we go on, what are the seven diatomic molecules? Oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, bromine, chlorine, iodine, did we say fluorine already? No, no fluorine. Or you could just, ostriches never what? Fly high. Ostriches high. never fly high in brown clouds. Okay, number 11. This one is a little harder, so let's go through it. Number 11. Okay, aluminum bromide. Now, the fact that it ends in IDE tells you that this is a compound, right? What's, what should I write above aluminum here? Three. Plus three. What are you writing about bromine? Plus, oh, minus, one. minus one, good. Now we crisscross it. Aluminum is AL. What number goes by the aluminum? Uh, one, so I don't need to write anything. Bromine is BR. What number goes there? Three. Okay, now what do I write when it says and? A plus sign. Chlorine gas is just chlorine by itself. So I'm going to put Cl, but then ask yourself, is it a diatomic molecule? Yes. It is. So what do I need to write? A little 2 as a subscript. Okay, then we get to this word, react. What do I write? An arrow. Okay. To form aluminum chloride. Aluminum chloride ends in IDE. We know that's a compound. What's, what am I writing above aluminum? Plus three, that's its charge. Chlorine is what? Minus one. Minus one, so we do the crisscross method. Al is aluminum, what number goes there? One, so I don't need to write anything. The three comes down here by the chlorine, so Cl and the three goes there. Correct? Okay, yep. then we see this word and again. What do I write? Plus. Plus. Bromine gas is just bromine, so I'm just gonna put Br but then ask yourself, because it's by itself, is it diatomic? Mm -hmm. It is. It's the brown. Okay, um, so put a little two there. Okay, now is it balanced? Take a step back. No, you can easily see it's not balanced. We've got three bromines here and two on this side. We're going to need to balance it. So find the arrow, draw the line. Okay, I've got aluminum. So I'm just going to list it from left, left to right. I've got bromine. I've got chlorine. Now put it in the same order on the product side. Okay guys, help me out. How many aluminums on the, on the reactant side? One. How many bromines? Three. How many chlorines? Two. Let's go to the product side. How many aluminums? One. How many bromines? Two. How many chlorines? Three. Okay. I just go from the top to the bottom. Are the aluminums balanced? Yes, they are. Bromines? They're not. Uh, 
What's the lowest number that two and three will go into? Six. six. How do I get to six right here? Yeah, I've got to put a coefficient of two. That gets me to six bromines. But how many aluminums do I have? Two. Don't forget to change that one as well. Okay. How do I get to six bromines on the product side? Put a three right there because three times two is six. So that gets me to six bromines. Okay, now I want to go back up to aluminums. How do I get two aluminums on the product side? I need to put a coefficient of two right there. That gets me to two aluminums, but how many chlorines now? Six. Okay, don't forget to change it if it, if it does change. Now, aluminums are good, my bromines are good, my chlorines. How do I get to six on the reactant side? What do I need right here, guys? Three. Yeah, because three times two is now six. Okay, and there's your answer. Okay, very good. Okay, I've got a couple more, and then we'll be done with balancing word equations. So if you're still a little bit kind of uh, lost, please, we've got two more. Pay attention, and we'll, we'll get this. Okay, number 12. It says potassium oxide and water react to form potassium hydroxide. Okay, this first one, potassium oxide, is that a compound, guys? Yeah, we know it ends in IDE, it's compound. Potassium's charge is what? Plus one. What's oxygen's charge? Minus two. Let's crisscross that. Potassium, what's its symbol? K. Oxygen is O. Well, what goes by the K first? The two, yeah, we need to put a two right there. Oxide is O, and what number goes by the O? That one, so I don't need to write anything. Here's that and again. What do I write for and? The plus sign. Water. What's water? H2O. Everyone knows that, right? H2O. Okay. And then it says react. What do we put for react? That's an arrow. Okay. And it forms potassium hydroxide. Is this a compound? Yeah, it is. What's potassium's charge? Plus one. Hydroxide. What's different about hydroxide? Good. Yeah, it's a polyatomic ion. It's one of those that are very common. What's the charge of hydroxide? It's the one, two, three, fourth one down on that yellow paper that I gave you. Minus one. Okay. If we crisscross that, potassium is K. And hydroxide, well, and what goes by the K? A 1, so I don't need to write anything there. Hydroxide is OH. And what goes by the hydroxide? 1. So do I need parentheses here if it's just a 1? I don't. So that's it. Okay. That's our skeleton equation. Is it balanced? It's not. Okay, so let's balance it. Find the arrow, draw the line down. Let's list the elements. I just go across from left to right. I've got K for potassium. I've got oxygen. And I've got hydrogen. I'm not concerned about the numbers yet. We'll do that later. For the product side, keep it in the same order. So just K, O, H. Okay. Now we're going to actually total up these atoms and see if they're balanced. How many potassiums on the reactant side? Two. How many oxygens, guys? Be careful here. Two. two. Yeah, one here and one here, so that's two. Hydrogens? We have two. Okay, let's go to the product side. How many potassiums? One. How many oxygens? One. And how many hydrogens? One. Okay, let's just start at the top. How do I balance my potassiums? Yeah, I need a coefficient of 2 on the product side. That gives me to 2 potassiums. But how many oxygens? 2. It did, it did change my oxygens as well. And did it change my hydrogens? It did. So just by putting a 2 there, it changed all of them to 2. And is it balanced? It is. So there's my answer. Okay. Very good. Let's go to the final practice problem on this video. Practice problem number 13. 
It says iron and water react to form iron three oxide and hydrogen gas. Okay, let's go through it. Iron, what is the symbol for iron? Fe. Now it's by itself, but is it a diatomic molecule? No. It's not. So I can just leave it Fe. Here's N. What do I write for N? A plus sign. Water. What is water? H2O. And it says reacts. What do I write for that? That's the arrow. That's the chemical reaction. And it forms iron 3 oxide. Is it a compound? It is. So let's figure out what the charges are, crisscross it, and write a formula. What's iron 3? Plus 3. Remember, the Roman numeral tells us the charge of iron. What's oxygen's charge? Minus 2. Let's crisscross it. The 3 goes down there, the 2 comes here. So iron is Fe. What number goes here? Guys? A 2. Oxide is oxygen. What number goes by the oxygen? 3. And what do I write? Plus. Plus. Hydrogen gas. So I actually just told us was was H2. But if it just said hydrogen, is it diatomic? Yep. Yes, it is. So I need to put a little 2 there. Okay, is it balanced? Yep. Quickly look, you can see the irons are not balanced. So let's balance it. Find the arrow. Draw the line. Okay, I'm just going to list the elements now from left to right. I'm going to go iron, hydrogen, and oxygen. List it in the same order on the product side, just so I can look across and quickly see if it's balanced. Okay, help me out, guys. How many irons on the reactant side? One. one. Yeah, that's just one. How many hydrogens? Two. Two. How many oxygens? One. How many irons? Two. Two. How many hydrogens? Two. Two. And how many oxygens? Three. Three. Okay. All right, let's just start at the top. How do I balance my irons? Put a two as a coefficient here. That gets me to two. They're done. Let's go to hydrogen. Already balanced? Yep. Let's go to oxygen. How do I get to three on the left side? Yeah, I need a 3 as a coefficient, and, and that tells me I have 3 waters, not 1. I have 3 now. That gets me to 3 oxygens, but did, did it change my hydrogens? It did. To what? To 6. So don't forget to switch that as well. Now, iron's good, oxygen's good, but my hydrogens are, are changed now. How do I balance these hydrogens? Yeah, to get to 6, I need a 3 as a coefficient right there because three times two is six. Are we balanced? Yep. Okay. Very good, guys. Um, that is balancing word equations. I think is, in the past, that's been the hardest for students to learn in this chapter. So um, if you grasp that concept, if you get that stuff, um, that's great because that's the hardest part. To give you some more practice, in your student workbook, there is a worksheet called Balancing Word Equations Worksheet. Again, it's called Balancing Word Equations Worksheet. Some more practice for you. Hopefully that makes sense and this video has helped you.